What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. On today's episode, we're looking at some new things in PFR for 2025. I'm Aaron, this is Colin. Let's dig in. Over the last few years, we've shared some exciting new research and technologies coming from PFR. And while we don't want to discredit anything we've done in the past, we really feel like 2025 might be the most exciting year yet in PFR. <coughs> this year, we're testing new technologies, exploring fresh concepts around plant health and nutrition, and expanding on some research we've done in the past. Uh, I think you left maybe one important piece of information, my friend. Uh, what would that be? Maybe we're doing a planter showdown? We've got John Deere, we've got Case, and we've got Fint bringing their latest and greatest planters hooked up to one of their tractors, and we're setting up the showdown of the century. That's right. We'll be evaluating singulation, stand counts, 24-hour emergence, user friendliness, and ultimately yield at the end of the year, right? And this is something we've talked about doing for a long time in PFR, and we are beyond excited to finally make this thing happen. Part, Part one, one, smart script technology, reducing pesticide use. The planter showdown isn't the only big thing happening in PFR for 2025. One of our new on-farm studies will take a closer look at Sentara's smart script technology. Because honestly, reducing pesticide is a hot topic in agriculture today. Whether it's for environmental reasons or cost savings, it's a discussion that most folks seem to be having. Now, one of the easiest ways for you to reduce your pesticide use is through something like Sea and Spray from John Deere or all the other different variations of that that are out on the market now, but not everyone has that capability on their sprayer. Well, that's where SmartScript can really come into play. Using drone mapping, they can fly fields, identify weed pressure, and then generate a prescription for their sprayer to go back out and then spray the weeds. Now, of course, technologies like nozzle by nozzle control or smaller control sections will maximize efficiencies. But even without those, we're excited to see if SmartScript can be an effective tool for reducing chemical usage. Part, Part two. two, green lightning, harnessing nature's nitrogen. You know, since we're on the topic of new technologies, let's talk about a product that's been getting a lot of attention lately. That's green lightning. Now what this machine does is basically replicate a naturally occurring process that creates nitrogen. So during a lightning storm, static electricity rearranges the nitrogen molecule in the air, and then that molecule gets contained within rainfall. So what the green lightning machine does is essentially recreate this process in a completely controlled environment, producing a liquid nitrogen product that is supposed to be similar to 28% UAN. We're running studies to evaluate how green lightning could fit into modern fertility programs, measuring effectiveness, application timing, and crop response. Like Colin mentioned, we're gonna be looking at this product a couple different ways. A couple studies on corn and a couple studies on soybeans, but for now, let's just focus on corn. The first question we wanna answer is, the big one in the room, right? Is this a true replacement for UAN? And so in one of our studies, we are gonna be looking at just that. Different applications and different timings of UAN and then also of the Green Lightning product and evaluating their effectiveness at those different timings and applications. The other study is gonna be looking at if I do completely replace my UAN with Green Lightning, does my economic optimum nitrogen rate change? And so we're gonna be looking at five different rates with Green Lightning product and evaluating which one is the most profitable for us. Part three, fungicide versus sulfur. All right, Aaron, why don't you tell them about our new fungicide versus sulfur study on corn? Absolutely. 
You know, there's been a lot of discussion in recent years about sulfur's role in plant health and whether it could even be a replacement for fungicides, especially in a low disease year. Well, in 2025, we are putting that to the test with our fungicide versus sulfur study. Our goal in this study is to better understand sulfur's overall impact on plant health. And ultimately, if we have that plant healthy enough and it has enough sulfur in it, in a low disease year, can we get away with not spraying a fungicide because the plant is healthy enough? There's been some research done in the past that maybe indicates that that could very well be a possibility. So again, really excited to see this year. It's been a hot topic and we'll have some hopefully really good data for you come this fall. Part four, expanding our fall seeded soybean research. Colin, why don't you introduce our final topic one that expands on some of our existing research. If you've followed us for a while, you've probably heard us talk about our fall seeded soybean studies. But in case you haven't, here's the rundown. We're using a unique polymer coating to protect soybeans so that they can be planted in the fall instead of the spring. So far, we've had promising results, but we wanted to dig deeper to see how we can maximize the planting method. Last fall, we launched three new studies focused on planting date, how early can we plant these fall seeded soybeans? Planting depth. What depth gives us the best emergence and stand establishment? And then lastly, population. What seeding rate maximizes yield potential? We're excited to see what this data tells us as we refine this practice for farmers. So to recap, what's coming in 2025 to PFR? The planter showdown comparing Case IH, John Deere, and Fent planters on multiple different performance metrics. Smart script technology, evaluating a drone-based system for targeted pesticide applications. Green Lightning, testing a machine that very well could be creating a product to replace traditional UAN. Fungicide versus sulfur, investigating whether sulfur can replace fungicide in a low disease year. Fall seeded soybeans, expanding research into optimal planting dates, depths, and populations. 2025 is shaping up to be a huge year for PFR. Stay tuned for the results, and as always, thanks for following along. Drop a comment below to let us know which of these studies you guys are most excited for in 2025. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notifications when new videos are released. And with that, we'll see you guys again on another episode of the dig. No, let's be honest. Er, cause, let's cause, be honest. cause let's be honest. Yeah. Cause let's be honest. Cause let's be honest. Reducing. Re We've used a unique polymer coating that protects soybeans so they can't be planted or so they can't be planted. So, so they you can't, can't be plant planted. them. You, you just can't plant these things. <laughs> just throw them in the trash. <laughs>